All right, hello, my most amazing artist. Today we're starting our new project called Little Owl's Night. It's based off a cute, cute book that I'm gonna attach to your Google Classroom assignment so you can read the book with us like we did in class. So I was inspired by this story because I think the owls are so cute and owls remind me for some reason of fall and we're getting close to fall and owls just might be one of my favorite things ever. So we're doing some owls. So today in class, what we did is we did a guided drawing. And like we did last year in kindergarten, this is when Mrs. Cole does a step and then you do a step. Kind of like when we'd watch Art for Kids Hub on our free days, it was something like that. So you're gonna need a piece of white paper. You want it to kind of be thicker than printer paper because we may be painting later, I'm just saying. So if you have a sketchbook or some drawing paper, you can get that. My paper is nine by 12. I will put a stack of nine by 12 paper in the office with your name on it. So if mom or dad wants to come pick up some supplies for this, they can and they'll have some paper at home. If you don't want to, you do not have to. As long as you can get some sort of paper, white or off-white would be perfect. Drawing paper, sketch pad paper, something that doesn't have edges is really nice. Worst case, if all you have is printer paper, we can make that work. It just might buckle a little when we paint. But don't worry if you don't have it today. You can practice this on regular paper and then maybe get drawing paper later. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure our paper is vertical. Vertical is where it's tall from top to bottom. This is horizontal, which is wide from side to side. So we want our paper vertical, okay? So once we get that, we need to find the middle of our paper. So remember the middle is kind of in the center. It doesn't have to be perfect. So once you find the middle of your paper, you're gonna decide where you wanna put owl's eyes. So we need to think of the shapes we learned last year. The owl's eyes are circles. So we're gonna be putting two circles in the middle. They don't have to be the same size. It's really hard to draw the same circle exactly the same twice, so just try your best. So with your pencil, you're going to draw two circles, not too big, but nothing teeny tiny, about a finger or so apart in the middle of your paper. Done, right? Mine aren't the same, but that's okay. Now, if you have a Sharpie at hand, I want you to go ahead and color in these circles. So this is where you can fix your circle if it's not perfect. Sometimes we can cheat a little bit by adding that color to hide where we didn't get it right. So color it in nice and neat with your black Sharpie or if you only have a black Crayola marker, that's fine. Just some, well, Sharpie would be best, but if you have a marker, that's fine too. We want the Sharpie because if we do add watercolor to this, it won't make the markers run. So get those circles the way you like them. Now get your pencil back, because there are a few more things to do. Because the owl is more than just circle eyes, correct? All right, now we're gonna draw a circle around each circle. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna draw a little circle that's not too far away all around my circle. It doesn't have to be perfectly even. I'm gonna do that one. And now I'm gonna do the other one. I'm gonna try to keep it about the same width but like I said, if it's not, it's not a big deal. All right. Now we're gonna draw another circle around these circles. So we'll end up with two circles around the black circle. So I'm gonna do one more time and I'm gonna draw a circle around the circle around the circle. It's pretty silly. All right. You wanna make sure you give yourself enough room so there's space between your circles and they don't crisscross. If they touch, that's okay owls have big eyes. All right, so we have our eyes with a circle and a circle. Next, we're gonna add like a sad face going across the top of our owl. So it's a curved line. I'm gonna kind of start on the outside of each eye. And if you wanna add a little dot there, you can. And I'm just gonna do kind of a curved line going from dot to dot. Now it's a little further down here than it is over here. I'm okay with that. But if you don't like that, that's why we have erasers. So you can always erase it. So get that curve the way you like it and be done. Right, Mrs. Cole's being picky, but you don't have to be. So once you have that, 
owls have a little beak and you can do your beak two different ways. If you want to do a more challenging beak, you can draw a diamond, which is really an upside down triangle and then, or a triangle and then one upside down underneath it like that. Or you could just draw an upside down triangle for a beak. That's my favorite. I like to keep it like that. That looks more like a beak to me. So you can put a diamond here for a nose or a beak, or you can do an upside down triangle. This is the one I like. Hey, at any point, I'm going too fast. You can pause this, rewind it, watch it again. It's a little different than in class. You can rewind Mrs. Cole. All right, so now we're gonna go back up to his head. This is our top of our little owl's head. And now we need to add the impression of feathers. We don't need to draw a lot of feathers. So I'm just gonna draw like a diagonal line coming out from this side. I'm gonna draw a diagonal line coming out from this side. And we're gonna add a zigzag line Okay, and leave it at that. So it's like his little feathered ears. So I did a diagonal line and I do some zigzags and brought it down, but I didn't connect it anywhere because now we need to make a big U going all the way underneath to the other side. So you might want to practice this. Remember, you can draw with your eraser crumbs if you want. Okay, I like the way that looks. So if you like the way the eraser crumbs look, then you can draw over it. You can draw with your pencil, your finger to get used to it, or you can just go for it. So since I did my eraser crumbs, <clears throat> I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna carefully follow my eraser crumbs because I liked how that was and come back up. And when you're done, you just wipe those eraser crumbs away. Now, again, my little face is crooked here, but I think that's kind of cute. It makes him look a little happy. All right, so we have our owl face. Now we need to add another U coming down and around for the body. So I'm gonna draw it again with my eraser crumb so you can see it. So I'm gonna draw a little body, it's a U. You decide as the artist how fat or skinny your little owl is. So if you like to draw the eraser crumbs, which I think is a great tool, you can do that, get an idea. So once you're happy with it, draw that letter U or that happy face from one end to the next. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, now we're gonna add our feet. So down the bottom, kind of like, did we draw feet last year? I'm sure we did, I can't remember. You're gonna start and we're gonna do a bumpy line. Or it's kind of like a backwards three. I'm gonna come over here, come down a little bit, and I'm gonna go bump, 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 and another bumpy line. I like little round toes on my owl. If you wanna do zigzag lines here and make more of claws, you can do that too. You're the artist. So it's starting to look like an owl, right? All right, we're almost done. We're gonna add another U inside our belly. And this is where we're gonna add some more bumpy lines to make it look like there's feathers. So I'm gonna start at the top. I'm gonna to go bump, 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 and keep going. And then I'm gonna come under here and where there's an end, I'm gonna put a bump there in between it so it kind of looks like it's a scalloped edge but you do what feels right for you as the artist this is the trickiest part these scalloped bumps all right what's our owl missing it's missing some wings so now we need to add some wings so i'm going to start up here on the, his shoulders i'm going to draw a curved line here i'm going to draw a curved line here and then I'm gonna do two bumps. One, two, oh, maybe I want three. Three, and I'm gonna bring it up for the wings. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So it kinda of can be one, two, or three. Again, you can decide if you want this to be curvy or pointy, depending on if you want really thin, sharp feathers or you want big, fluffy feathers. I just kinda of like this one. All right, that's our owl. How cute is our owl? We're gonna add a couple more things. Our owl's kind of floating in the middle of nowhere. So you wanna kind of put him on a tree. So what we did in class is we drew a big vertical line coming right down, but not over owl, coming down from the side and coming down. So you can try this with your pencil eraser first. Come down, jump when you get to your owl and come all the way down to go off your paper. Something like that. And then he needs to be sitting on a branch so I'm gonna take my pencil eraser and pretend like the branch is going just under his feet. So it'd come outside this wing. So you're kind of drawing a vertical line 
and then just under his feet, that horizontal line. But don't cross over your owl because you want it to look like it's overlapping or pushed in the back. So once you get it the way you like it on your eraser, go ahead and do your pencil. Now, since trees are kind of wobbly, you can make your line a little wobbly or you can keep it super straight. That is up to you as the artist. I'm gonna come here a little bit. When I get to my owl line, I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna bring that branch up so it looks like it's on his feet, hopping over any pencil lines, and then coming out here. All right, I'm gonna wipe my pencil lines away. All right, so our tree trunk over here is pretty done, but now we need to thicken this branch. So I'm gonna draw another line underneath that line. So now he's on a branch. So you can finish your branch a couple ways. You can just put it straight line here and call it done, or you can do like a zigzag, like the branch was kind of broken. You can add little leaves if you would like. Or you can think it's really truly fall and there are no leaves left. So you decide these are your details as an artist. Okay, so add your leaves if you want them. You can add lines to them. Or you can leave them off, it's totally up to you. All right, one more thing before we're done. This is Little Owl's Night. So what do we need to add? Something that makes it look like nighttime. So how about a full moon? Because owls probably really like full moons. So we're gonna draw a big circle somewhere behind owl. Again, you can draw your circle up here where he's not in the way, or you can make a really big moon and have it go behind little owl. Just don't cross into our friend. I'm gonna start drawing with my pencil eraser because that makes sure I know what I'm doing. I don't know. So decide how you like your moon and then just go for it. Do the best circle you can. If you don't want it to be a full moon and you want it to be more of a crescent shape, that's your choice too. Now look at that. You are all done with your owl. What I would like you to do for your, to catch up with your class is once you're all done drawing your owl, it's exactly the way you like it, get out your Sharpie from your art kit and outline. You know Mrs. Cole loves a good outline. Outline all your pencil lines with Sharpie. That way you're ready for day two next week. All right, have fun, enjoy your owl, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Goodbye, my most amazing artist.